to take high resolution video images of what is happening to the electrodes and link that with what is happening electrochemically to your battery. During discharge, lithium is stripped off the anode surface and migrates to the cathode. During charge, lithium is deposited back on the anode. Repeated cycling can result in stripping and redeposition that roughens the surface. The roughening of the surface changes the electric field and draws more metal to spikes that are beginning to grow. These can grow with tremendous mechanical force, puncture the separator, and directly connect the anode with the cathode which can create an internal short circuit. This can lead to an uncontrolled discharge reaction, which heats the cell and causes additional exothermic reactions leading to what is called thermal runaway. Okay, ah, here we are. So this is the program is running. We perform five cycles at 0.1C and five at C over 4, C over 2, and then again one cycle at C over 10. What you can see is the formation of macroscopic phases. You can see these very dark um, spikes and dendrites. This is uh, beta sulfur. And then at the end of the discharge, which comes right now, you can see such a ring forming from the outside, because here is the source of the lithium. And then you see always at the end of the discharge this ring. And in between, you see this formation. Now we go to a higher C rate. And as you see, also this ring and the dendrite formation is different now. Now we go to even higher, and you can see this effect. We have also seen already in the morning um, keynote talk by Silly Bashers that you have uh, also an evolution of gas or of dry areas in the cathode material. But then when you go to 1C back, you have somehow a recovery of these dry um, areas. Okay, and now it starts again is known, so we just zoom in into um, these two cycles, and there you can again see very sharp um, sulfur um, charge transfer process, and this correlates very well with the appearance and disappearance of these chunky um, sulfur dendrites, and when you increase uh, um, the speed or the C rate, then you can see this also this mapping is changing. So. This um, relaxation process is allocated to the um, Li2S formation process and uh, solution, um, precipitation and dissolution process. And this one, this is much more narrow, is, um, um, corresponds to the sulfur charge transfer process. So this is also, as I told you, in full agreement with uh, X-ray absorption spectroscopy, which was also done in the operando mode by uh, Cuisine et al. So you see the occurrence of the um, sulfur dendrite precipitation and the dissolution is very well correlated to this area of this uh, red shading here. And also the Warburg uh, impedance and the uh, solution resistance reflects ion depletion during the solid phase appearance. And uh, the Li2S precipitation is, as I told you, in a good agreement. So we can really say this is the charge transfer connected to this process and this one to the sulfur precipitation. And um, these dendrites, because it's an imaging uh, method, it can really now follow how fast they dissolve and how fast they dissolve. And as you can see, you have a, a low transmittance when you form the dendrite, and in the vicinity of the dendrites, you have a depletion of sulfur species. And when you dissolve it, you get, again, more sulfur around the dendrites. So this is quite a fast dissolution, because, um, although it's a large volume and uh, it's an insulating material, this works very fast and these dendrites can grow up with a velocity of 1.2 micrometer per second, so they really shoot over here this electrode. This is uh, another um, result of our measurements and you can see here um, this reaction front, which will uh, occur at the end of every discharge step and here from the images A to F, and as you can see, it's a um, circular uh, inwards migration of high transmittance phase at the end of every discharge. One assumption is now that this is uh, uh, due to the high uh, lithium ion concentration which um, migrates inwards, and you can also measure um, this uh, radius of, of this ring, and then you can uh, makes the first derivative and then you get the velocity and you see also this is in the range like the growth of the sulfur dendrites uh, 
one micrometer second per second in, in the maximum. So just let me conclude our findings. So we have the, the first uh, X-ray radiography of a lithium sulfur cell. We can see the occurrence uh, was the appearance of two different uh, sulfur phase, the alpha and the beta phase. Then we have a good correlation of the EIS and the appearance of the sulfur dendrites and also the distribution of relaxation times agree well with the formation of Li2S compared to X-ray adsorption spectroscopy results. You see at higher C rates a dry out effect inside of the, uh, of the coin cell, but you can also see a recovery during charge with a low C rate. And then you can analyze this um, um, dry out effect or recovery effect in the very first five cycles and also the other cycles. And you can see this is strongly, of course, um, as expected, correlated to the capacity fading. Um, with this imaging method in high resolution, you can really uh, check out how these um, solid phases grow. And at the discharge, you can see also a nice effect, but we are still uh, performing uh, more experiments on this here to understand this effect because no matter what cathode material we have, we see always this effect.